Introduction In 2021, if you have a product that you want to launch on the internet, because that's where it's all happening today, this is the skeleton of the plan you need to build. When Jeff Bezos started Amazon, they were dealing only with books. Bezos and a small team were packaging and delivering books from a garage. It's a classic rags to riches story. Today, Amazon has surpassed Walmart to be the world's largest retailer. Today, the world is a lot smaller thanks to the internet. People and the market are a lot more receptive to new ideas. Otherwise, Facebook would have never happened as quickly as it did. Forget its many transgressions, and you will see that the company was able to take off because it understood the pulse of the people, pitched exactly what it needed to, and proceeded with excellent strategy. Whether it's the growth of technology or the pandemic speeding things up, more and more things are being accessed on the Internet. E-commerce has become more accessible and is providing exciting business opportunities. And every industry is spawning individuals who want to be their own bosses, decide their own working hours, or just want to take advantage of this Internet explosion. Some are smart and some are inspired. Whichever category you fall into, you will be competing with all of them. Because, make no mistake, they are all on the Internet trying to get the guy on the street to buy their product. So how do you make yourself unique? How do you rise above the white noise? Now, it's one thing to know what you want to sell, but it's a whole other thing to know how to launch and market the product successfully. And then, of course, you certainly want to make money out of the endeavor, don't you? There's a lot to go through, and in the coming nine chapters, we will go through the journey of sifting through all of your options and getting the job done from start to finish. We'll create a plan for the product launch. We'll go through how to do it. We'll go through each step in detail and we'll discuss the tools you need to get your product to the finish line. The idea is to create a plan of action that will help you identify, locate, and utilize your resources in the best possible way as you keep planning the next steps of your online business. Part of that last step is going to be about marketing techniques that will help you source your product right to the point of running a store virtually and maybe physically if that's in the cards. Let's start by understanding the importance of a product launch. Why a product launch works so well There are many reasons to do a Big Bang product launch. The first one, of course, is to let your customers know that there is something up for grabs in the market. You also get to make some waves in the industry and get a little recognition for your brand. Apart from that, prepping for a product launch also gives your organization a little structure to work around. And after the launch, of course, you get valuable information and feedback from the early users of the product. The idea of a product launch is not to nail it 100%. I mean, good if you can, but there will always be last-minute changes that will topple the plan from just a little bit to entirely gone in the dumpster. The idea for you as a leader is to make sure that you get as close to the perfect launch as possible because this is a test of your organization's ability to execute a plan. Your launch tells you how well you can stick to a plan and the dynamic changes that happen in real time. It tests the flexibility and adaptability of your team. When those run-throughs are successful, you increase your chances of having a successful product launch. Now that increases the chance of having a successful product in the market. It gives you momentum in a way that it resonates with the customers and announces to the industry that you have indeed arrived. It's clear that a product launch is a key event because it gets your attention. You need a press release with all the dates and details of the event. You need to advertise it on your website and social media channels. You need all these channels to come back to the landing page where everyone who is interested in the event, not just the product, can learn about the event and the product. A product launch is also a great place for influencers and first users to try the product out. It's an exclusive and must be pitched as one. It also helps you build trust and creates a discussion in the online community organically. In marketing terms, it's called the word-of-mouth strategy. Putting yourself out there also shows that you are confident of the quality of your product. That's a big boost and makes for a good product launch story for anyone covering the event. It's also important to understand the right timing for the launch. You don't want it clashing with events that are more attractive to your target audience or influencers, unless, of course, you're Apple. A product launch works because it gets your product noticed and creates a buzz about your brand in the industry. Product launches are, without a doubt, a great way to expand your business because you fundamentally put yourself on the map. When you attract the attention of industry titans, you create relationships, which leads to the opportunity for future growth.
How to Construct the Perfect Launch Plan The first thing to know about a product launch is that the focus is on the customer. When you are out there in front of the people, it's very tempting to talk about the features of the product. It's true that a lot of people want to talk about the technicalities or the specs, if you will. But remember that that information can be found on the website or any number of new reports that will be filed after the event. What you must tell them is how the product changes their life. Focus on the buyer, not just the product. Talk about the comfort of the product. Talk about how specific it is to a particular situation and help them understand why it simplifies the task at hand and in turn simplifies their life. That is what makes it exciting for the users. Research shows that over 40% of startups do not succeed because their products do not fit the market. Sometimes the reason is that your marketing team has failed to communicate just that to the user, even when they had a good product in hand. Get opinion makers to weigh in. Then you move on to getting the opinion makers on board. By using opinion makers, you get everyone to talk about the product long before the launch. This is what was mentioned earlier about getting predictions out. If you are an established brand, you have a competitive edge here. If you are known to create innovative products, even better. But even if not, you can always get the big names in the media discussing what your product is all about. Don't hesitate to be bold. The next step is to take the big idea and present it as such. A revolutionary idea will catch on even if it's not its time. Let that be the one thing we learned from Steve Jobs. Every good product has the capacity to change at least one thing about its business. That's what you need to focus on. Make a pitch that knocks the socks off your competitors. Make the event a spectacle. Your fourth step should be about turning the product launch into a carnival. Don't let someone enter and spout out marketing facts. That's really not what anyone wants to see. Plan for pre-orders. Next, a product launch is also a great time for pre-orders. A lot of businesses miss out on this step, and it's a critical one. When you build the momentum for your product, you want to cash in on that excitement and get some sales done. Be clear about product positioning. Then there is the matter of positioning your product. When it comes to beating the competition, there are a lot of things to take care of. You need the features and pricing in order. That depends on the initial positioning of your product in the market. This is a key part of a successful product launch because it's the first impression and sticks around for longer than you might imagine. Finding out what type of products to launch online. There is absolutely nothing wrong with jumping on the trends bandwagon because the market is truly quite saturated today. Generating an original product idea can be a challenge. Thankfully, there are plenty of ways to analyze what users in a specific demographic want and cater to those needs. In that sense, picking the best product to sell online is a key part of your pre-launch preparation. Let's call this phase one. You can start by identifying niche segments. These are often some of the most popular e-commerce business segments. That's because they have a loyal user base that is highly engaged and keeps coming back for more. They also put their money where their mouth is. Dabbling in this zone also makes it easy for you to create a product and make a business proposition to your investors. You will be able to build brand awareness and when the time comes, get the traffic you need. It will be relatively easier to convert potential customers into buying ones. Health foods, engagement and wedding bands for men, personalized stationery, pet products, beauty products that are cruelty-free are all great niche product ideas. If you ever sat in an e-commerce launch strategy meeting, you will know this is a crucial move. No amount of marketing can help you push a product that cannot be sold in the medium of your choice. In fact, it will be a waste of your resources. And to figure out the best product to sell online, you need market research that tells you about your customers' pain points. It's undeniable that ultimately, it's their needs you are catering to. This can be done in many ways. Companies are now looking to identify these pain points through keywords and search engine queries. This includes the search bar on your website. There are many search engine optimization tools, like Moe's Keyword Explorer and Similar Web which can help with keyword research. They also help you discover what your target audience is looking for. There are also other avenues like Reddit threads, Google Trends, and Trend Hunter. You can build on that information by conducting surveys or customer interviews. 
Sometimes the easiest way to get things done is to ask. If you are an e-merchant, you must understand what your current users want and what is lacking in their experience. Make sure you are top of trends and fads alike. There's nothing worse than picking the wrong wave to ride. Start the brainstorming phase by identifying a problem that a product can solve. Think of essential services or goods. Determine the market need for the product. It's called a product market fit, and it means that the product at hand fits the needs of the market. It's one of the biggest aspects of marketing because that's what decides whether you will capture the market or go up in flames. And that information comes from market research about the needs of a customer. Without that, there is no way to gauge the success of your product, and sometimes that decides what the scope of your business is. There are a few ways to determine whether you can successfully sell your product at a given point in time in the market. In 2018, Forbes magazine called this a hair-on-fire problem. A market product fit indicator tells you that your product meets the needs of a customer like no other competitor does. Consider this number. If 40% of customers don't want your product to leave the market, you most likely have a hit in the bag. If the product is getting a lot of media coverage, or if you need to hire a lot more people to keep going, you have achieved product market fit. But the biggest physical indicator is probably where the products are disappearing from the store sooner than your ability to make them. You are doing well in terms of product market fit. The first step is to pick a category that is proven to be successful. When you enter a highly competitive market, you have more to lose because the established brands have already captured most of it. Your product won't work unless you plan on revolutionizing the business. Be sure to enter into a general space if you want low risk. In those general spaces, it will be easy to locate existing services and see what the customers are complaining about. That helps you find a pain point relatively easy, and you don't have to find or manufacture customers for your product. The second smart move is to make sure you listen to your customers. Before you start selling a product, make sure you create an outline of the experience you have. You need to understand the revenues in terms of the local and global markets for that product space. You must understand your competition, the life cycle of that market, and outline the target audience. These four things help you make more informed decisions. If you have existing customers, that's your third step. This happens when you have brand awareness and loyalty. There is no factor bigger than this one when it comes to selling a product. Your present customers are constantly being lured by a variety of options in the market. While you focus on getting new paid customers, don't forget to keep listening to the existing ones and how their needs are changing. Keep their needs and financial capabilities in mind before changing strategies for new customers. Getting your marketing material ready. The first thing to know about marketing is the tools you have at your disposal. Your resources to market a product are just as important as the ones you need to sell them. Remember that no one shows up to a party if they don't know it's happening, let alone if they don't get an invite. Social media for free. In today's world, social media is the one thing that almost everyone can access. Your campaign has a big hole in it if you don't use the likes of Facebook, Twitter, and such. They are free if you don't opt for paid advertising and can spread the word about your product like wildfire. You can reach interested customers and convince them to give it a go. Preparing for that starts with text and visuals. Almost no campaign can run without visual media. So, get some good pictures, because these platforms also like promoting audio-visual content. That's because they are easy for the customer to consume. Video content is another sure-shot way to get top-of-the-shelf spots on social media. If you're going for Snapchat or Instagram, make them short and sweet. If you are going for longer video content with instructions or reviews, target YouTube. Email marketing. Even those who are off social media have an email ID. Practically everyone with access to the Internet uses emails. So sending one email a day with promotional information can do wonders, especially because Gmail helps you categorize it as such in its inbox. Email marketing is also a great way to get subscribers for your product or services. Sending email blasts is a great way to get customers, but don't go overboard because that will land you in the spam folder. A monthly update with a reminder to subscribe is pretty good, 
This can come in the form of a newsletter that has a mix of texts, links, and audiovisuals. Email marketing is said to be a very efficient tool in building a loyal set of followers. Those who subscribe can also be offered discounts and vouchers for their next purchase. Tell them about the product launch and what to expect. Paid advertising. Social media is, once again, a great place for paid advertising. If your target audience spends a lot of time on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you might want to get a piece of that action. Ads need to be enticing, but also to the point. Make sure the copy and design are on point, because typically, your potential customers are scrolling on their device, and your ad needs to stop them from doing exactly that. Building the buzz and pre-launch There are so many ways to build the buzz about your product, even before you launch it. In fact, that's the time to do it, not after. Getting the word out about the product is the goal, right? Here is how you get that ball rolling. Teasers Marketers often go for releasing the first look when they want to give the customers a taste of what is to be expected. That is a tried and tested formula and works like a charm. A teaser campaign needs to be planned carefully because its only aim is to create an impact. It grabs the attention of the users and must force them to engage. Behind the scenes Give the viewers a tour of what's happening behind the scenes. This creates a personal connection between the brand and its potential users. Your creative process is capable of giving them the stimulus they need to pay attention to what you're selling. You don't want to give it to them in its entirety. Remember that we're still only talking about teasers. The idea is to give them just enough to draw them to the launch. As is the case with the launch itself, even here, you want to focus on the human story rather than the specs and features of the product. The goal here is to just create a relationship with the audience. If you want to keep the mystery, even when you don't want to give too much away, you can create a buzz that will keep the industry and customers hooked to your product. Apple, for example, does not tell you anything about the product. Even after the launch, the product is not available for sale for a while. Despite that, when the product finally is available, there are lines to the end of the block and they sell millions of gadgets within days. Contact Influencers Striking deals with influencers on what they can talk about to their audience is another way of spreading word of mouth. But you must pick your bloggers wisely. Make sure they have a large organic reach among your target audience or are voices of authority on the subject. You still don't need to give them all details if you don't plan to. But make sure they are exclusive pieces of information to entice them to take the deal. It's called a scoop in the business, and they love it. But you need more than a few pitches if you want them to go for it. And you can't give the same piece of trivia to them all. So, this requires a lot of meticulous planning. While making a list, make sure you are talking to influencers who have a presence across all social media platforms so that the reach is not limited. Go through their accounts and see what kind of brands they promote. Launch Process Explained No matter how much history you have and the mystery you have managed to create in the days leading up to the launch, the event must take a few specific questions into consideration. Did you consider the right trends before planning to launch the product? Are you aware of the landscape in which you are launching the product? What makes the product accessible to everyone in the target audience? How to make the launch customer-centric? Do you know the parameters by which to measure the performance of the product? Once you answer these questions, you will be closer to understanding what the launch itself is going to achieve. Now, there are three different types of launches. A soft launch is when a product is introduced to the market without drawing too much attention to the product. Then there is something called minimal launch which is meant for smaller products. This is also applicable for upgrades to an existing product. And finally, there is the full-scale launch, which is mostly what we have been talking about through this entire book. Step one in the process is to make sure the product is launched before it's completely ready. What does that mean? No, we don't mean a half-baked cookie should be parceled out into the audience. A lot of times a product is not perfect till it is tried and tested. This is also possible because the competition is stiff and you did not opt for an A to B testing on the product. In that case, what you can do is a soft launch, 
that helps you reach a few members of the industry or early users. They test the product and give you feedback, which helps you perfect it for the full-scale launch that will probably come months later. Step two in the product launch strategy is to focus on customer experience. Instead of focusing entirely on the product itself, take a look at the ads and sales literature. Step three is to think about the end result. This is specifically applicable to product teams. You need long-term vision and strategic thinking to make a launch and the product itself successful. Step four is the timing of the launch. You need enough time to plan and prepare for the launch. The thing that a lot of businesses miss is that it is okay to postpone a launch if the product is not up to your standards. Post-launch tactics. Once the launch is done, it might feel like the load is off, but this is much like getting elected president and not the release of a movie. The real work begins after the success party. After the launch, there are a range of tasks that every department in the company has to fulfill to make sure the product is a success. You want to look at the responses the product is getting and the feedback that is invariably coming your way. Whether it's a soft launch or a full-scale launch, you must know that neglecting to capture the market after the launch has several negative consequences. Monitor social media. This is a great way to talk to your customer directly and also use existing positive reviews to attract new buyers. With an efficient social media marketing campaign after the launch, you can spread the word about your product. And since we're talking about a digital product launch, the customers are likely to be buzzing with reviews. Keep the channels of communication open. Even at this stage, you must pick the platforms for a post-launch campaign wisely. Check the data. Apart from your marketing endeavors, you will also receive customer experience data. Get on it right away. If you have done beta testing or a soft launch, you have something to compare it with. In fact, you must expand your capabilities to track the magnitude of data coming your way after a full-scale launch. You will need to know about conversion rates, adoption rates, acquisition rates. This will give you the first signs of whether your launch was a success. Run referral campaigns. While this is a post-launch strategy technique, you must get on the planning aspect of this step before the launch itself. Referral marketing is a way to get existing buyers to recommend the product to new ones. It's a branch of word-of-mouth marketing. Get brands or influencers, depending on your product and industry, to endorse your product and talk it up. Get customer feedback. Keep your radar sharp for feedback coming from various channels. Social media is a powerful tool, but also keep an eye on platforms like Reddit, where users are going to be brutally honest. This, of course, also depends on the brand and product and where your target audience is likely to spend their time when they are online. Customer retention. No matter the kind of product you make, the acquisition is not the only thing that matters. You must make sure that your customers are engaging with your brand in a positive manner. This means you need them not only to be happy with the product, but willing to commit to future rollouts from your company. This depends on the marketing strategies you devise to give them a good experience engaging with your company. This is a job for both the marketing and product teams and the tech support teams. At this stage, a lot of companies go into a reactive mode. Conclusion The journey from coming up with an idea for a product to making it to testing and launching it is a long one. And as we have just seen, there is more to do right after the product is out in the hands of the customer. Every step of the way has a critical role to play in whether the customer returns to your brand when you are ready with the next rollout. At every step, you need to make sure that the customer experience takes precedent. It's important to get them help when they reach out, and that requires planning. Sometimes, it also requires anticipating the scale of the problems, if not the exact issue itself. Planning for alternative scenarios and backups in case of failures is non-negotiable. It's the only way to gain their loyalty. Now, every brand has its own approach when it comes to presenting itself to the customer. That depends on many factors. Are you reaching out to customers who have plenty of options, or are you offering a unique solution in a saturated market? Are you counting on the vision of the product, or is it going to be a marketing blitzkrieg that will win you your audience? Are you picking a new product in a niche space, or is it a follow-up of an existing model? When you know the answers to these questions, 
you also know who your audience is. That tells you a lot about messaging and communication. We've seen how to use the many platforms at your disposal to get the word out. We've also seen how wrong things can go if you make a simple mistake like picking the wrong format message for the wrong platform. But if you don't make any of these mistakes, you will have given yourself a scalable product that is a result of a collaborative effort. Once you have the product out there, put some resources into tracking the stories that the customers are sharing with you. Make sure all this data is analyzed and turned into quantifiable information that can be used to improve the product at hand. Make sure you follow up with the partners, opinion makers, and influencers you brought on board early on. Use the existing marketing channels to talk about the impact your product has had. If there are issues, even small ones, don't try to cover them up. Make a plan to resolve them, and most importantly, share it with the customers. When you get a positive testimonial, use it as free advertising for your brand and product by retweeting, pinning, and sharing the response. Use it to boost the morale of the team. Put your best foot forward and get the word out. Hold contests to tease the customers, to expand the abilities of your product and share them on your website and social media handles. Announce rewards for those who get creative. If you make fitness equipment, ask your customers to post pictures and videos of them using your equipment. Make it a competition. If you make gadgets, ask your users to use them and post the results. If you're making cameras, do a contest for the best pictures. If you make GoPro accessories, ask your users to shoot their next hike. There are so many ways to get your target audience interested in your product, even after the purchase. Remember that that's what keeps the romance alive. Now, it's time to take action. Get your product launch planned. Then, your product launched.